Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Card Art. Sunday afternoon, and I thought I would pop in and paint some little journal covers. Um, I have not painted on these before. They are pretty cute um, little, actually they're little sketchbooks I picked up at Michael's. As you know, I'm always on the hunt for unusual things to paint on, not just canvases um, like we usually think of. So these are, were uh, just little tiny sketchbooks, which I love the idea. I, I love to sketch. I always have a sketchbook with me. You'll find them right in with the sketchbooks at Michael's. And um, I thought, wouldn't they be cute to paint? And you could use it as a sketchbook, but you could also use it as a journal. Um, great for little gifts. Hey, thank you guys for popping on. And um, so we're going to paint a little bit this afternoon. And I would love for you to... Uh, to, to watch, but also ask me any questions that you might have as we go along. Let me remove the banner and pull up the comment so that I can see what you're all um, popping in. So please say hello when you come in. Give StreamYard permission if you would so I could see your name. And I'd love to know where you're watching from. I'm in Maine right now on the coast of Maine. Um, it's a beautiful day. It's super hot. I have a fan like blowing on me right here. But I've been dying to paint these little journals. I've picked up so many cute little things to paint for you guys, but we'll do the journals today. I'll start on this little black one, but I may do all of them if you want to hang out and watch. And if not, it'll be recorded, so you can come back anytime. So do say hello, and uh, I'm just going to use my regular craft acrylics. You could use your tubed acrylics. Whatever you have, acrylic paint would be great. I'm, I've tested on the back a little tiny bit and it seems to take the paint okay. I've not painted on these before, but I think it'll be kind of fun. And don't you just love it? So you could do this, paint the little covers, present it as a gift to someone, use it for yourself, for your notes and things. Or you could go ahead and start filling the book. You could start filling the book with like a mixed media project or some of your uh, calligraphy, poems, quotes. You could put little pictures. This would make an, a, a fabulous little, um, a little book full of memories. So there's all sorts of things you can do with it. We're going to paint the covers just to make it a little special today. So um, anyway, say hello. I see you guys are popping on, but I want to make sure, let me know that you can hear me and see everything okay. When it's really tiny like this, I'll try to lift it up for you. So what I did to prep these little books, I just drew on with chalk on the darker colored ones. What I have envisioning for this is a technique you may have seen me paint when I paint the whole background black, draw um, the design in chalk and then paint in between the chalk, erase the chalk at the end and there's a little bit of a black outline. So we'll see how that works on the little journal cover. I just have a little bouquet of flowers there, a little vase. Um, I thought a bee, I thought a, I love painting bees and there's so many cool bee sayings. I'm going to put be happy probably on here. I'm going to paint a little bee and some little flowers across the top. It's very lightly sketched in in pencil. And then did you all see my huge, enormous under the sea painting I just finished? It's um, with the octopus and the jellyfish. It's, it's huge. You'll see it on my page. It's as big as me almost. So I'm going to take a little bit of that painting and paint my little purple octopus on here. Since it's got a cool teal background, I'll incorporate that for the ocean color. And then I'll paint a few jellyfish and maybe some seaweed. We'll see. I don't really have a big plan, but I'm going to just make it up as I go along. And I appreciate you guys coming along for the ride. So, yeah. So say hello. Um, I think everything's ready to go. I've just taken out a variety of colors. I have more if I need them. So I have the basics and some colors that I love. Sometimes I just put out colors that I love. Periwinkle, these teals, purples, pinks. Um, I'll incorporate them all as we go. And I'm going to just get started. I have a variety of brushes out here. I'm just using my synthetic brushes, some flats and some rounds. And what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll pop onto this one first. So this is going to be, like I said, that technique where I'm going to paint a little bit inside the chalk lines. It's a, paint, a black background. So if I want a light color, I may have to base coat that with white first, which is fine. And I'm going to use some small brushes for this little technique. So I'm going to paint, maybe I'll paint the stripes on the little vase first. And this is kind of a rough technique. It's not like I am have a perfect design that I'm going to try to follow. I'm going to just paint the stripes. I'm varying from my um, sketch design a little bit, but I'm going to do some stripes there. One coat seems to be doing it for that. I'm going to go maybe to my darker blue now. And can you see I'm going in between that color, but I'm leaving a little bit of that black from the background showing up. If I need to, I will come back in and do a second coat. 
Sometimes when I'm painting, I like to have little bits of the background color showing through. I many times will paint on a red canvas, and I love those little bits of red that peek through the canvas when you're when you're um, when you're done with your painting. So here you can see it's a little hard to see, but I've left a little black in between, and you'll see when we're done with the light colors. And maybe I'll put just a little bit of a something that it's sitting on there. Maybe I'll just take some white. I just want to give it something to sit on. I'm again leaving a little line. Sometimes I go real heavy with the chalk lines, and that way I butt right up against them. And when I erase the chalk line, I know there's going to be a little black there left. This I didn't do such, I used a kind of a light hand. I didn't plan on doing this technique when I was sketching, but then I thought of it as I was working. I may change the color and put the, another color on top of the white, or I may just leave that little bit white. I kind of like the way that looks on the black background. It's rough and ready. I'm not being very careful. I'm just kind of stroking on the paint. I'm going to put in some uh, some leaves first, which will be kind of behind. That's a very dark green. You can't really see it, so let's just lighten it up with some of this apple green. These are just little one-stroke flowers, leaves, excuse me, leaves. So what I'm doing is I'm just really pressing down and pulling, and can you see the little leaf shape I get with just one stroke? I use that a lot when I'm painting florals or for filler in the backgrounds, even for um, some of the seaweed. Oh, thank you. I think it's a great idea, too. Hey, Michelle. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see it till it's done, too, because I should probably, like, practice and do a sample and then paint them. But you guys are so good about coming along with me and figuring this out as we go. So I'm just going to paint. I have some leaves over here. What I'm doing is just a couple different shades of green. I'll use that apple green by itself. Sometimes I'll add a little yellow, a little white. This is a fun little painting. We're not going to stress about uh, getting everything just certain way. I want to do some of the dark green. I know it doesn't show up as much, but I want a little bit here and there, some of that darker green as well. What I like to do sometimes is these little fillers. So I'll take a little bit of some of the lighter colors, whatever you want to use, and I'll make a little line, a couple little lines coming out. You could do this with a liner brush or a detail brush too. And then I just put a little series of leaves to make it look like a little bit of I don't know, ivy or vine work. You see there, I'm just making a little press and pull with my brush. Press and pull. These are just behind the floral uh, bits. A lot of times, you know, I paint from the back to the front. So these guys are sort of in the background. Then we're going to go in and paint some flowers. I'm going to just do a variety. I think I'll do a little sunflower. You know, I'm always painting sunflowers. So I'll just get a little bit of a sunflower in here. Sometimes I start those with an orange. I am painting a little bit inside the chalk line. Can you see it's just a little bit inside the chalk line? We are going to go over this a little bit because, you know, the transparency of uh, orange and yellows is, uh, that's how the, the acrylics just are. So we'll just put a nice coat on there and we'll just go back with some yellows and get it a little darker. I'm going to skip around. I'm going to make like a rose back there. I've got some red out here, some pink. I do a lot of times like the one stroke roses. I think I'm going to make this more of an abstract kind of a little bit of a rose. I will start it with some red and maybe just stroke in some pink or white. It's going to need a few coats, but I'll just get a little of that in there. So it's just a little red, like a little red ovaly circle and a little pink dabbed on. Nothing fancy, just dabbed on. Hi, Katie. Nice to see you. Um, and like I said, when we put the second coat on, the color is going to pop a little more. I am going to uh, put a little more teal on there when that dries. I think I'll do like a white daisy over here, which means the center um, is here. And because it's yellow, I'm going to paint it in white the center first so that when that dries, I can get a nice little bit of yellow paint on there. Whatever brush works for you. This one is feeling a little big for me, but I'm going to work with it for a minute because I like the way... It's going to make some nice shaped leaves. Watch us. We're going to do these little petals of this daisy. I'm going to just sort of press and pull in, press and pull in, press and pull, press and pull, right along there. I may even do two coats of that center so that the yellow center, when it gets painted, is going to be nice and bright. And I like to repeat things. So let's put a little bit of this uh, same sort of rose type flower down here. I'm just putting on the red wiping off my brush and just taking a little pink and just dabbing it on there. I'm going to do the same. I think I will do the same over here. It's just peeking out. 
just peeking out there. And because we're painting on black, you know, it looks a little dull, but we're going to brighten it up. And we are going to see, I don't know with this little technique with the um, chalk will be good in between the petals in here, but I don't, it, I don't want to paint the whole background in so you don't get that effect. But I'm going to just, we're going to see what it comes out looking like because I can always go in after with my little white pen and, and give it some highlights too. So, hi, Darlene, I've been meaning to message you. Um, anyway, I, I haven't, but I've been meaning to message you and I'm meaning to say I'm in Maine until Wednesday if you're around. I'd love to see you and catch up. So that's my cousin, Darlene. Say hi to Darlene, everyone. Hello. Um, okay. And practice, yeah, it's practice those petals. I know I did them quick on here, but say I got a bigger brush, I could show you a little better what I am exactly doing. All right. So if just so that you can see, I'll do it on the paper. I'll do it in the color just so you can see, but pretend this green is a daisy petal. And you, I sort of start, sometimes I'll start with the brush a little parallel. So not flat, but parallel. Uh, that way to put it down and then if you press look at that nice shape you're getting and then you pull in when you get towards the center and these are all just practice and they're fun you could just it's like zen afternoon just sit with your paper or your palette you could do it on a paper plate and just simply practice those brush strokes then you can also go flat edge press 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 and pull and kind of turn and get a nice petal we did this one night in the membership we did one night of just practicing our one stroke flowers but we didn't even get to flowers all we did was practice our brush strokes and everybody thought it was just the nicest most relaxing time we sat all together and chit chatted and uh but but just practiced to practiced our uh brush strokes hey kid hi welcome nice to see you today when I'm doing this, I'm painting on these little journal covers I got at Michael's. This is a little label that was on them. Adorable to make as just a little gift for someone, whether you give it to them blank or fill the pages with some really meaningful quotes or little photos, or if it's for your friend, any kind of little snapshots of the two of you and, and all the memories that you've made is a fun um, gift. So, okay, I am going to go back in. I'm going to use that same little brush I've been using, just a little flat, just a little flat brush there. I'm going to quickly put another coat because I know I want a nice yellow center on that daisy. Let's put that there. Wipe my brush off because now I'm going back in towards this sunflower. And I'm just going to go in and go over the orange with a little bit of yellow. It's kind of a golden yellow. I think it's called saffron. I really love this shade. And I stopped dark to light like I do um, painting many things. You don't really see that orange under there much anymore, but you could always go in and put a little back in if you wanted. I like to have a little orange in my sunflowers. And then I just get lighter and lighter. I'll go through a lighter shade of yellow, or I'll mix white with that shade, and I'll just kind of put a little bit in there too. So that the flower looks a little interesting, and it just gives it more of a three-dimensional look if you've got like dark to light. It really has a nice look there. Very simple, but um, it really does the job. It, you don't have to get too detailed in these things has a big dark center and I did not get brown paint up but let me grab a little brown paint um, I like it really really dark so I may take this brown paint next to my black and just add a little black to it I want a nice dark center to that sunflower so can you see I'm just putting a little dark it's just the sign of a stroke just adding on a little it's not a perfect circle it doesn't matter my petals there out the wet the white ones are still wet so let's that dry a little bit and let's go on and do something to these little uh, what are going to um, look like roses even though we're not going to get them too detailed you can just do a few strokes of color sometimes and get across uh, the element in it and it's going to read as it doesn't have to have every little petal painted I've just kind of blobbed in some red again it's almost like we could do those into geraniums that would have been cool too but I'm going to go with my pink I love the pink with all these colors you see, I'm just making like little calm, a little seek sort of strokes with the pink, like just a hot pink, or you could just mix your red with some white and you get a nice pink as well. Can you see just those few strokes are starting to look just like a little flower? And I would always just take the color. I always go, like I said, dark to light. So I've got the dark red, pink is in the middle. Now I'm going to take pink with a little white and do some strokes. And I'm just just patting that on kind of a little curve stroke it reads as little roses right and do it as much as you need to like if the paint is still wet and when you put your lighter color on it kind of gets lost in the in the medium shade or the dark shade 
wait a little bit, let it dry. You can add as many coats on of the acrylic as you want. And I may, because I'm thinking maybe I'll, these are be sort of a beach rose, which means take a little tiny bit of a white with my yellow, just so it's a little more opaque and a little dot in the middle. Just, I don't know why, I just think it needed that little, a little dot there. And I think our daisy petals are fine as they are, and we'll just get a yellow center. Just taking my yellows, and I'm just going to paint in that center. Now I want to give a little dimension to both these little centers. They're kind of a big center. So I'm going to just, in order to make it look rounded, just take, I'm going to take the darker yellow maybe on one side. Paints wet on wet, so it really kind of blends as it goes on. If it does not show up, it doesn't show up well on camera, I would take a little orange maybe. I just want you to be able to see it. You can see it there now. And a little white on the other side. And I've got a dark side, a light side, and it's going to give the appearance of it being rounded. See how that just those little bits of uh, highlights and, sh and shading gives it a little dimension? What I like to do for the center of sunflowers is they have that sort of dip in them. Um, I'm just going to take a little orange and make kind of maybe a little half circle or a little bit of the middle. See that just it's a little calm stroke, I guess. And it's going to look like that's a little deeper in the middle. I might put it along one side here. And that little divot in the middle is really dark. So maybe I'll go back with the black and brown really dark and just put it right in there. You don't need to do too much fussing with that little that little uh, center. And the little pollen dots are the most fun. I do them on all my big projects with sunflowers, but it's just when I do them on these little guys, I'll do pollen dots on the daisy and on that little sunflower. And I just take my little dotting tool. You want something really thin for these tiny books. I lots of times will just use the back end of my paintbrush. But if you need something smaller, these little dotting tools are pretty cool. They have little different size little balls on the end. And I'm just going to take and use any color you have on there. And I just put them around the center, not in a perfect circle, not just on the petal or just on the center. I just kind of scatter them. And I just kind of use whatever's on my palette. I can use them just along there on the little daisy. Whatever colors, oh, that's uh, really small, so you're going to have to get real close to see. See those little tiny dots I put around the center? You could do any color, maybe a few green ones. And super easy, right? This isn't hard. Let me do another coat of my stripes. I love that tealy color, and I really want it to show up. So, And I'm using a flat brush that's just about the size of my stripe, so it makes it very easy. I don't have to do it all in one stroke. I do like a variety of flats so that when I'm doing something like little windows on a house or a barn, it's the perfect size and I don't have to use many strokes. I just one stroke will do it. So let's just get a little bit brighter. And now this is still wet. So what's good about when I do something rounded like that, I'd like to dry off that brush, take a little white. The closest bit to us is a little brighter. So this, this is a curved pot and I'm going to just make it a little lighter in the middle because it's wet and wet it kind of works a little bit and so it's just giving me the look that it's a little rounded I'm just putting it in there and just softly blending it and the same with the um this was like a periwinkle blue but it looks very dark on the black background so let's just put another coat brighten it up a tiny bit And I think I will make the little light section with the teal that we used on this. So just in the middle, just a little, just to make it look a little rounded. I think I'll use that white that we put there as the base, which is fine. I might take a little bit white and just make it a little brighter in some spots. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Just a little bit here and there. And now that is probably good enough to be done. I may add, sometimes I like to add in little vein lines for my leaves. And uh, because the black background, if we do some, just a, there are just a few little white lines. Let's add a little something, something. There. 
I think that's a nice little a nice little bouquet. I might add a little white vein lines to my around the center of my sunflower. Okay. So I want to let that dry a minute and I'm going to erase those lines and then we'll see how the black looks coming through in places. Like I said, it, it, it works better when you do the whole background a color too. But let's see what it looks like and then we can add, I think I might want to add some little touches with my pen. I have this white pen. It's like a gel pen. It's the only one I have found that writes and covers over acrylic paint or if you're doing mixed media, it's fabulous. It's the Signa, Signo Uniball. And it's like I said, I've tried all the paint pens, which work great too, but this is a fine liner. So this will go and write right over everything. It, it's nice for signing paintings and things. I know you can't really see it down there, but it's going right over that green paint really nicely. So I always love this when I'm doing a watercolor even or a gouache. I always go in and if I want to add some little touches of white, that's a perfect way to do it. Hey, Tracy, how are you? Thanks for popping in. Nice to see you. Um, so... I was going to see how much time we had, and you guys just hang out, and I'm going to paint a few more. Um, and like I said, if you can't hang out, that's fine. You can catch it on the replay. But I've been dying to paint a little smaller version of that big painting with the octopus. And it's very lightly sketched with chalk, which is great because you can erase it afterwards. And I think I'm going to just paint. I love my uh, octopus it's purple. It's, it's, a new t it's a new surface for me, so you can see it's very... Um, see-through but that's okay i'm going to do one coat of um the purple and then i can always go and add a little white or maybe the second coat will be fine octopus are so easy you guys it's sort of like just a little oval for his head and it's more of an illustration i don't want to say cartoony but it's not like a realistic um octopus so you can just use just paint it and have fun with it it doesn't we don't care if it looks exactly like a you know a, a realistic uh rendering of an octopus Hi, Gail. Hey, you don't have to say also known as Gail because now I know it's Gail. It's Gail. Hi, Gail. Um, so good to see you too. You've been painting up a storm. You guys, let me know what you've all been painting lately. I love to hear what, what's going on in your lives. Instead of me up here t gabbing all the time, I would love to hear what you're uh, up to. So I paint sort of an ovally head, like I said, and then I just paint egg, eight arms. I, I kind of squiggle them a little bit. I curl them on the end just for fun. Not that, you know, that might not be the way the octopus looks, but I, I think it's, it's going to work. So that's my guy. Let him dry. I'll put a few coats. The jellyfish we've been painting a lot lately. Those are fun. I'm going to pull up my jellyfish, my octopus painting over here too, just so that I have it in front of me, sort of. Yeah, so the jellyfish are kind of transparent, which is going to work great where our, we don't have great coverage on this. They're kind of transparent to start with, so it's perfect. So when I go on with my white paint and you see through it, that's the, that's the technique we're looking for. And they're tiny. They're just tiny little, tiny little jellyfish here. They're just kind of this little shape. They could be all shapes, so really, it just doesn't have to be. It's like a little mushroom shape almost that I'm doing, my guys. And if I paint that, if we get to that B, um, the wings, the same thing, are going to be a little transparent. So it'll be nice to not have to work at that. So can you see, I put on the paint, but you can see through it. And if I take my brush, dry it off on my paper towel and pull off more of the paint, you even get more of a transparent look. Got a little heavier paint on the edges and just pulling some off there. And that's how I'm going to start them. And then I'm going to take some white. I throw some colors in there. I throw a little pink and purple because I like to add color to everything. But for now, I'm going to just start their little, um, not really tentacles, but what are these little things that come out of the jellyfish? The little arms or I don't know the terms, but uh, you know what I mean. I'm using just my detail brush for this. I'm starting at the body of the jellyfish, wiggling it, bringing it out. And that's how I get a thin line. If I start, wiggle, and then pull it up off of the surface, you tend to get that nice thin line. So they look jelly-ish already, right? And we're not even um, getting much to them. I'm not going to go and put all kinds of sea creatures because this is a tiny little journal. We're going to do my favorite, the octopus, and a few little jellyfish. So what I do is I take a little pink, purples, whatever colors you like. I don't want to have it heavy. I want it to be light because it's sort of transparent. And I'm going to put a little color on those guys, just like I said, because I like color. It doesn't matter where it is. I've just dabbed a little bit of pink on there. I'm going to take a little bit of pink now 
I might mix a little white because I don't want it too harsh. And I want some of these little guys coming out to be colored too. So the pink will work. I'm going to thin my paint down though. It's, it's dragging a little bit. It's really hot. I'm going to add water. Whenever I'm doing any sort of detail work, I always add a good bit of water to my paint. Wiggle it. So speaking of crazy things to paint, you know me, I'm always painting something crazy. If it's not nailed down, I will paint it. If it doesn't walk away, I will paint it. So what is the most unusual thing that you guys have painted? I'd love to hear that. I know murals, a lot of you guys do murals and things on walls. And and I've done, did you see my ice skates? I did ice skates. I've got all kinds of things. i got some little zippered bags here. I think, Gail, you were doing those. I haven't painted those yet. I've got all kinds of little, I'm always collecting things. If I haunt the antique shops and did you see, oh, the bowling pin. Did you see that? That was a bowling, that was kind of crazy. So I'd love to hear what you guys are painting. Oh, hey, Cheryl from Cheryl. Hello. Thanks for watching. And from Illinois too. It is interesting for me to see where you guys are all from. I'm from Massachusetts up in the Northeast, but I'm a lot of times in Maine and that's where I am now. And oh, it's just, we had some rain today, but it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Uh, any color you want. I might take this little, it's kind of a purpley pink. I might put a little dab of that on my jellyfish. It's transparent and light, so that's why I'm adding a little um, white. And, and it's actually coming out to be about the same color as the pink. So let me go with a little bit of a light purple. And when I use a color, just a little touch on my jellyfish body, I will add some on the little tails or the little, I don't know what they're called. You guys know, let me know. Just to get a little purple in there too. And that's probably enough. I do go back. The white has dried. So I might deepen it up a little bit. They would be more solid on the edges. So can you see? I'll just go a little bit. I'm not going to do a perfect outline. I'm just sort of a little line here and there on the very edge of the jellyfish. So we left it a little bit more white on the edges. But now I'm just going to accentuate that a little bit with. And we'd get much more detail if these were big. I like to, uh, I'll do the couple of these little tails uh, in a brighter white. And I love to put little dots on them, polka dots. They might not have polka dots. That's the thing when you're painting or you're doing illustrations. There are no rules. You guys want to do whatever colors you like. Just put polka dots on things. I mean, it's whimsical and fun. We're not here to paint a real um, underwater scene that's going to look real. i rather add funky colors. And I'm going to take and put like little polka dots on this guy, like freckles. Now, does he have freckles? I do not know. I do that on my octopus, too. I'll add little little dots, which now the purple is dry. Do I have eight arms? Let's count them and make sure. Oh, I only have seven, and I have a blank spot there, and I was hoping I didn't have enough because I would like to put another arm in. Yep, good, because it looked a little weird there. So let's put one more in. It's kind of coming out from behind him. It can even cross over here. It doesn't really matter. It's just another little arm. And now I'll put a second coat on the dried bits. So when I put it on at first, I felt like it was a little slick and I didn't know was this going to be the right uh, surface to paint on. But the second coat is going on really nicely. I did not treat this with anything. I didn't use any sort of a any fix, fixative or anything. I'm just painting right on these little books as they came. And like I said, I just found them at Michael's in where the sketchbooks are. Oh, darling, yeah, the bowling pin was fun. I might go over. It was an antique store across the street, and they had a couple more, so I may go back. I have some ideas, not turning it into a snowman this time, but just painting a scene all around it. So maybe they're, they're still over there for sale. There was two more. I'm going to go check that later. Oh, thank you for thank you for following me, Cheryl. I appreciate it. I'm going to if I have I'm not following you, I'll give you a follow when I'm done. I would love to um, see what you're working on. And for all you guys that are watching me on my page now, I do some guest spots now on Craft Round the Clock, which if you have not subscribed yet to that group, it's on Facebook, and it's really cool. It's all sorts of crafting. So I do painting, and, and lots of the, the people on there do all sorts of crafts and floral arrangements and vintage stuff and, oh, my God, repurposing things. I am, I am just wishing I had more time in the day now. So if you think of it, go on over there and give us a follow too and see what 
it's Monday through Friday all day long, like six in the morning till I think 10 at night. Every 45 minutes is a new crafter on. And I, I find myself in the car just listening now and seeing what people are working on. And it's really inspired me to um, just look for some more unusual things to paint on. And, and, and uh, I have some things I picked up today that I can't wait to show you. So those will be coming up. But please, if you uh, are like, like to craft or want to learn some new crafts, I know if you're like me and you're an artist and a crafter that you're, it's kind of like a shiny thing. I'm always attracted some new craft that I just have to try. So uh Hope to see you over there too. And you may be just watching the replay on, on there and you may be watching me live now or the replay. Still, any questions, even if it's a replay, put them in the comments. I'm, I'm gonna monitor them and I will of course answer any questions you might have. Yes, that's what I knew that Cheryl. So that's where I recognized you from, yeah. Um, and I'm brand new there, so I'm pretty excited and uh, still learning, so. Okay, so I don't think we need, I might, I don't think I'm going to put like seaweed or anything on here. I'm going to paint my eyes on my octopus, give him a little highlight, do those little tentacles. And I think I will put some bubbles. Same idea um, that I painted the jellyfish. So I'm using my white paint and I want it to be a little transparent when I do bubbles. Inside my membership, when we do our tutorials, we've done bubbles, transparent items. And it's kind of fun to just concentrate on little little techniques of particular elements rather than, you know, whole painting. So we do that every month too. We just tackle little subjects like trees or waves or just little bite-sized pieces. So I'm just putting on those light little circles. If we were doing bigger bubbles, there would be a little more to it, but we're just doing little transparent circles and you can just make them look bubble-like by adding a little highlight. I just put a little comma stroke of white paint I'm just getting the little guys in there. And when that dries, I'll show you. We just put a little little comma stroke, or maybe a little outline if it needs it. And for the little tentacles on him, and even though it's small, I did the same thing for that huge painting. I'm not going to get painting like the little suction cup things all individually. I'm going to take maybe a pink because that'll show up. Take my pink if I need to, a little white with it, thinning it down with water because this is going to be a little bit of a um, detail. And here's what I'm going to do to make them. I'm just going to put my brush down in spiral. Little rough spirals are going to form them. They don't have to look perfect, but I just press my brush down and just do a little little, little spiral. I know that's hard to see, but let me... And, and, and honestly, this is so small, you could almost just make little, little dots. So I'm going to take white, pink, and let's see. And this is the underside. So the underside of those arms have those little tentacles. So you don't see them in the same place on all of them. Some you wouldn't see them at all. But let's pretend like this little arm is coming down and then it's turned over. So the little turned over part. And you know what? I'm going to just do little dots on this one. It's just too small to go and make the spirals like this for each tent, each little suction cup. And so what I'm thinking is it, it will look like the arms this way and then it's turned over, turned around because they do turn them like that. And then maybe under here you'd see some. And then maybe on this one you'd only see it on, you know, on the bottom edge. Making these sort of gives that little arm uh, dimension in, in, in the, the feeling that it is turned. This we won't even see any. This one could almost be like coming out of the back here. You'd see a lot of the bottom. And then it's twisted forward and you might see just a few there. You don't have to do them everywhere, like I said. And this one's a big long arm, so we are going to have that one sort of twisted a little bit. So we'll do this. And then it could maybe be twisted there and back again. This one, again, could be just uh, the top and maybe see just some of them under here. And let's just make this one like under. Just little random dots. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you for um, telling all your friends. I mean, I, I don't want to, uh, we're on, you know, Facebook and um, if you have crafty friends or art friends or anyone like that, please um, let them know that I'm out here painting. And eyes. Okay, eyes. I do kind of sleepy eyes on the on the octopus. I know it's kind of weird. So I do these little, I uh, sat with the whites and I'm going to put them here. So it's just a half, it's a half circle. It's going to be the eyes. It's a half circle of white. And then we'll put a little pupil in there, a little iris and a pupil. 
But how I make it look like those sleepy eyes is I'm just going to take some pink or it could do the lighter purple, just something lighter and paint the top of the circle like this. A little white in the middle, like a highlight, like a little, so it looks rounded. And because it's wet and wet and I'm working pretty fast, I can sort of just soften that. Let's give this guy some teal eyes. It will match the background. This is the idea. Do octopuses have teal eyes? I have no idea. It doesn't matter. It's my octopus. I can make it any color I want. Whoops. I kind of blob that little eye. Got a little blob. What I do when I get paint where I don't want it, I just wet the clean brush and I just lift it off because it's still wet. And if that was a dried bit, you could just paint over it with the purple or whatever color you're trying to. There. Easy peasy to fix mistakes in acrylic paint. It's very forgiving. You can paint over, wipe off. If you get your acrylic paint where it should not be, you can always use a little alcohol. I always have some handy to wipe off any little bits that get in places where it should not be. If she was bigger, I might be give her little eyelashes, as we know, that octopuses probably don't have. And um, you know what? I sometimes, in my illustrations, because they're, that's what they are, illustrations, I give them little lips. She needs little lips. It, not that they would have it on an octopus, but I'm going to give her a little, little lips there just because it's pretty cute to do that. And I also sometimes give them little blushy cheeks. They're turning into little cute characters more than a, uh, a real under the sea thing. But pink with white, very light or very um, watery with some water mixed to it, makes a nice little cheek. And I do need a little black little black, oops, it's right there where the logo is, little black pupils. So I'm going to let that blue dot dry. It's a little heavy. I don't think we need anything else on that. Let's put it aside for a minute. Oh, the little, the little comma strokes to make the bubbles look um, round is just little white. It just gives, it just makes it look like a little bubble. Okay. And that's just going to dry there. And I'm going to go now. This is all dry, so I could just wet a little bit of a paper towel or however you want to just get rid of those um, chalk lines. I'm just getting the chalk lines off there now. Chalk is a great little thing to have in your kit for painting and whatnot because it just you can sketch and sketch and erase it if you don't like it. Oh, thank you. I, I like the bubbles, too. Hey, Sandy. Good to see you. Thanks for popping in. And Carol, tire cover, insert for van. That is very cool. So was that in acrylics, too? And, and you probably needed to put some sort of finish on that. I'd love to know more about that. Or please share pictures of these things on, on my page. That would be great. I would love that. Um, so, okay. It looks cleaned up a little bit there. And because I lost some of my black in between there, I think I'm going to. You know what I think I'll do? Hang on. I think I will, instead of the black outline technique, which we started doing, I'm going to um, use my white pen, I think, or even my white marker. Let's just see. I sometimes like, especially when I'm doing mixed media or really loose, uh, abstracty kind of paintings, is I like to put a little bit of an outline around things, but not careful, not perfect, just kind of um, there. So for instance... I can go and like outline my leaves a little bit here. Can you see the white? And I'm not trying, I'm not getting it right on the edge of the leaf perfect. I'm just going to give it a little sketch. I've lost my vein there a little bit. Let's put that in. I'm going really light on this because I don't know if this pen is going to wipe the paint off the slicker finish of the journal cover, but it doesn't appear to be. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to outline some things, like I said, kind of roughly a little bigger than they are. I'm not paying attention to it too much. I just love that little bit of an outline look. I might take a little half circle here to uh, accent that little dip in the middle. Actually, the white is working very nice. This pen is working very nice on here. Same thing with these leaves. I'm just going to give them a little outline. Pet uh, yes, yeah, not leaves, um, petals. I'll do a little design on there. 
I must have skipped some of these. Uh, and they're not showing up the little white veins I painted in, so I am going to do them now. And, you know, if it's something small, you could just do one side of it. No rules here. No, no rules. Just have fun. Put out all your colors. And just go to town. So many techniques. So many different things. So many different ways you could do each thing. I show everyone how I'm doing something. And sometimes like this, I'm not even sure. I just go with the flow. And um, I never expect you have to follow that exactly. I want you to um, put your own spin on everything. I think I am going to give this a line. I'm going to go in between here. Sometimes it's not a perfect solid line. I'm just sort of starting and stopping. And if I make it imperfect on purpose, no one's going to expect those lines to all be perfect. These little pens, like I said, are great to sign your name as well. And it's nice because you can get a nice, a nice little... Um, solid lines if you want to write something you could so that's kind of fun isn't it it's really fun when things come out turn out okay but that's not always the case but i have to say if there's something that's bothering you when you're painting something's off and you can't figure it out put it up in a mirror or take a photograph of it because i'll tell you half the time when i'm painting i can tell where my mistakes are by looking at the video not really what i'm painting so that's a little tip show show it like hold it in the mirror or like a photo with your phone and right away you'll say oh that's not right or just leave it alone and look at it the next day and more times than not it's fine in the end and if it needs a little something you're going at it with fresh eyes third little um tip is important we're painting tiny things not so much today but when you're painting step back even these though i am holding them away if you're painting a canvas or anything step back people you're so you're too critical we're all too critical when we're looking at something this close we want to look at it from the viewer's point of view. And they're not going to be examining the tiny little bits that they can see three inches in front of them. So really do step back, step back. It's so important. Um, and here we back are with our little octopus. And I'm going to get those little black dots for his eyes in. Any kind of eyes, when I do eyes of people or animals or whatnot, I always, even as tiny as this, I've got the iris in and a collar. I've got a little pupil. And you always want to give a little white highlight. Brings those eyes to life. And I'm just going to do that. It's the tiniest little dot. The thing to remember, you hardly see it on this, is to put them in the same place. So if you've got two eyes, put the little highlight at nine uh, at 2 o'clock. Make sure the other one's at 2 o'clock. So you don't want like cross-eyed, crazy, googly eyes. Although you might, and you could do them opposite. But... Uh, I know it's teeny. I don't know if you can see the little tiny, oops, the little tiny eyes. They look googly there. See, like what I said about in the video, it looks a little weird. In person, it looks fine. You would just, you can just erase your little lines. I might almost even like a little outline on this one with the pen. I love the way that pen looked. I could really, um, if I needed to, this, um, I've outlined pretty well on this jellyfish, but you could always go in with this little pen and make any little details you want. I'm gonna make a really squiggly little, what are these? What are these called? And I think I'll go around and outline my little um, bubbles. They'll really make those pop too. I'm not worried about them being perfect circles. Do the best you can. There's nothing wrong with wonky. And again, the outline, I'm not going to struggle and, okay, I'm going to get right against the edge. Just make the outline the best you can. I don't want it to match up with the body perfectly. And that would be that. And just a quick little here and there. Not sure I'm loving the outline in white on this, so I don't know if I would do it again. But I'm going to do it here and there so it's not a solid line. We, we, we learn as we go along. Let me know what you think. Do you like the white line on this? I'm not loving it now that I started it. What do you guys think? Might be better just to have left it painted. I love it on the jellyfish on the bubbles, though. So. It's either what's it? It's either like um, you, you always learn something. So it could be a lesson, even if it's something that didn't come out the way you wanted it. 
And again, like I said, if you leave it alone and look at it the next day, it's funny how all of a sudden it just all comes together. I'm almost getting the look of the turned over bits. I do like little dots sometimes. On her head, we'll just do a few with the back end of the brush. Just a few little, I don't know. I just like those little dots on it. She looks very cra scraggly now with that white outline. So I have to say, I'm not sure I love that, um, that white line. But I can always paint over purple. So we've got a little octopus journal. We've got the flower. And I know it's going on a little bit, but you know what? Let's paint the bee since I have it sketched. I'm here. Um, you guys, thanks for watching, But and, and I'll love it if you stick around. But you, if you have to, you can catch the replay. To me, less is more. So... That's a perfect way to, to describe it, Darlene. Like, I could probably have stepped away from that octopus and not outlined it. But um, you're right. It's, doesn't, it's not a race. It doesn't have to be finished right away. So you can step away and um, come back and forth to it. All right, so this is going to be sort of simple. I'm going to do some little flowers up here, pretty much like I did over here. Um, like for little roses, I'll just take some, they're going to be like a few little roses there. I've got some red and some pink paint here. I'm just going to make this sort of scallopy blobs and let them dry. I'm going to do some leaves just like we did with the uh, green paint and the flat brush. And I'm just going to vary them from light to dark just to make them a little different. And I'm going to just do some little leaves. And I'll just make them, I'll fill them in as I go. But I just want to have some different colors. Um, I have a little smaller square. Like I said, I really like all the different size square brushes. So I love this apple green. I use this a lot. That could come in too. Mix the two if you want. Mix in some yellow if you want. I just want a variety of shades is my thing, really. Could go in and do that um, little viney bit. So that I like to do with the apple green and a little white. And those could just stick out as... I'm going to go a little darker so you can actually see it. That could be little bits... See how quick that was? It's very small, so you don't need a lot. Just a little bit of uh, foliage and leaves and things. And that red paint is already dry, which is great. You can use your flat, or you can go back in with the round, with the pink. And it's just a matter of squiggling. Now, that pink is not showing at all. I'm going to put it on there a little bit here and there, so that when I take some white now, it has a color to sort of blend into. So... I thought it might show up, but it didn't. So right now on top of this, I'm just doing little scallopy lines to make it appear a little bit as roses. You know how you could paint roses super detailed and almost like a perfect, um, each petal shaded and highlighted. And that's great for something bigger maybe, or if you want to paint that detail. But these little guys... They're reading as roses, and they're just some little squiggly lines on there. If it was a bigger one, I might shade a little bit or put a little dark here and there, but I think this works just fine for what we want. Little bees are fun. Their wings are transparent, kind of like our jellyfish idea. If I was painting on a dark surface, I'd make their wings white, but we are painting on white, so what should we do? We're just going to go and make their wings a light blue. I know now from painting on the covers here, there's a little slick surface and it goes on a little bit um, see-through, which is perfect for this. So I'm taking this light blue, putting it on, but spreading it out as I go because I want it to look see-through. And I can even take my dry, I'm just, I'm just drying my brush off over here, and I can scoop some of that color out. Like the jellyfish in the white, a little darker around the edge. Kind of looks like a little transparent bee wing already. A little bit of paint, spread it out so it's see-through. A little darker on the edges. I think I'll change the shape of this one to match that one a little better. If I think it's too solid, I can certainly pull some paint out. And if it's a little difficult pulling out, just wet your brush a tiny bit, pat it off, and you can pull some of that pigment out of the middle. 
Now we'll do the bottom wings here, sort of shaped like this. And we'll fill them in, but like I said, I want it to be see-through, in the middle especially. I don't know if you can hear the rain. It's starting to rain. Um, and on this little roof, you can usually hear it, but uh, let me know if the audio is not good enough. Okay. Oh, Renee, thank you. They're so quick and easy. They're really not hard. Um, the more you stress and the more you try to do to them, the... the more difficult it is if you just kind of blob it on a little highlight little shadow step back look at it it's fine and if it needs a little detail look you could always outline so okay the body of the bee let's do the yellow first because um the black will cover easy but the yellow will get on there first make sure my brush is pretty clean because i've had other dark colors so i'm going to just rinse that off squeeze all the water out and I'm going to mix the two yellows I have. I have a really like that saffron yellow I love, but the bees are probably a little more this shade. So little black head. So then I just kind of skip along. So this little section would be um, yellow. I looked up bee pictures. This might not be the real way the bee stripes are, but that's the way we're going to make them. The little back, the head and the little back tail end is always black. So I'll get a little, I'll squeeze a little stripe in there. It's just painted flat yellow. We want to make the body look rounded, right? So what do we do? We make it a little shading on the edges, lighter in the middle, and it's like that, like the vase. So it comes forward a little bit. I'm going to use that orangey saffron yellow as my shadow. And I, if it doesn't work, I will use a little um, orange. But on the edge like this... And then a little white in the middle. I'm working kind of fast. I'm hoping that it stays wet and I could blend it. Sometimes when you're painting wet and wet, though, it blends sort of on the brush for you. So I want to get it a little bit lighter in the middle. And then I'm just going to see if I can't blend that a little bit. It's dried pretty quick. It's pretty warm. It's drying pretty quick. So I'm blending the best way, I, the best I can with my brush. And then I can always go in with the yellow again and use that sort of as a little bit of a blender. And sometimes from a distance, it doesn't have to be blended perfectly. That is not blended perfectly, but it gives you the idea that that looks way more rounded, right, than it did a minute ago, just the flat um, yellow stripes. And then the black. The black we're going to put on, flat paints, just paint it in. I do want to highlight, give a little highlight to that. And you'll find when I paint anything black, I don't always want to highlight with white. It just gets gray, and that's a little dull. I like to highlight all my black things when I'm painting animals or black fur or whatnot. I try to uh, use my highlight as a light blue rather than white. Um, so you'll see me do that a lot. And I'm just going to paint in. This is the little bee's head. And the body. Let me paint the little head in because on the body, I like to make them look a little fuzzy. So I don't want to paint a perfect band. Let me fill in the middle. And I'll fill in the middles, the edges in the middles, and I'll show you why. And then I just put a little in the little a little bead bum there. And what I like to do is make these little uh, rant squiggly strokes, maybe a little fuzzier. Can you see it's not a perfect line? It's just I'm just going down onto the B, onto the yellow with these little strokes. Is that rain super loud for you guys? Can you hear me okay? And I'm just pulling, and it's just, I can almost take some of the paint that I just put on in the middle, and if not, just load a little more black on your brush. So it's just a little jaggedy. And like I said, I wanted to give it a little highlight, but I'm going, oh, little antennas. I'm going to use the blue for the highlight, but antennas, let's get back into that black. And again, it's a spine line. I add water when it's a fine line. You could very well go and use um, a little pen, too, to do this. You don't have to do it with the uh, paintbrush if that's a little bit um, hard for you. The little antennas, how I make them, I just start with a little round brush, press, 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 and pull them in so it gets a little thinner. Press and then pull them in and it gets a little thinner. Just little antennas. A little blue. That's drying pretty fast, so let me see. I can maybe go in with my little light blue. 
and they're just going to be lighter in the center here in the middle it's a little wet still it's dragging the black but let's see i think it's okay and if that's the case if it's still wet you could always go back in a few minutes and put that blue in and i don't even want to blend it that much i kind of like the way it looks being a little solid a little bit of a comma maybe here on the head so the body looks a little bit more like it has some um you know um some dimension and now the wings usually i would put in like little vein lines with white but i could probably use my little pen hi bonnie thank you so you could go in and i just make little vein lines i'll put this up close for you in a second again this i usually paint them in but the pen is right here so you can certainly use the pen see the pen lines just little veins in there but i can't really outline it in white because of the white background so i think what i'm going to do is just do it with this blue just so i can have a little bit of definition on the edge of the wings so I'm just going to go on the edge and do that. It's a little darker there because I wiped it out with the middle, but I want it just to accent that. And I think I brought up a reference photo of some bees. Let me take a quick look because I just go, like I said, in my head and just, just do them, but sometimes it's nice to have a reference photo. Bees, bees, bees. They're little um, legs. I do them with a, just a detail brush. And I use a stroke like this because they just have like little sections. And so I just would press the brush down, press and press. And can you see how you get those little sections? I'm just going to look at the picture because it looks like they have like, I put two coming out here. You can start at either end, but I'm starting on the outside edge of his little leg. Very lightly press, up, lift, press, lift, press. Gives you a little bit of like, it looks like those little sections. Sometimes I see um, a bunch of legs in the back, but let's just do um, two on each side. So just press, press, press. I'm kind of leaning them down towards me. I'm glad I looked at the reference photo because it looked like something was missing. Little B. Now, here's where I don't know. I could maybe outline the little wings with a little black, but I think I'm going to leave it and uh, see because I don't want to go back and have it look wiggly like that guy. And then I was going to just write Be Happy. Um, or you could do it with a pen, of course. And what I'm going to do is the white on my roses has sunk into the paint as it dried a little bit. So I'm going to go in with a few bits of white. I like it where it's a little pink, but I want just a few little call up strokes of white and i think i may just write with that red pink because it will just bring that color down here a little bit i like to use my colors in a few places when i'm painting i think i'll use the pink and red mixed and i'm just going to although now with be happy you could have made it a valentine's thing and put be mine and add some hearts up there Just using block letters, it's the easiest. My hand, my writing is not the best. Um, someday I want to learn calligraphy. I have, I can do a little bit, but not as cool as most people. I love watching. That's almost um, mesmerizing watching the calligraphers form their letters and things. Okay, there we are. I think in the in the vein of putting our colors around, I think I'm going to take a little yellow. And put them in the middle of those roses like I did on the other, just because it will bring the yellow from the bee up there. You could do little curly cues if you wanted. I will erase the pencil lines that I can see when I'm done. Um, but that's it. I didn't really know if I was going to paint all three, but since we were here with paint out, and there we are. What great little gifts. And like I said, I'm not sure about this guy. Will I go back and paint over the white lines with the purple? If I want to, it does cover. 
So I want to hear your opinions. White outline, no white outline. So any other questions or anything, you guys? Hi, Bev, <laughs> across the street. <laughs> Um, so there we have it. Um, some cute little journal. So I appreciate you all watching. I'd love it if you gave me a follow um, on my page and uh, painted with me again. And I will uh, see you all soon. But happy painting, you guys. Thanks for popping in. And any questions? If you're watching the replay, no worries. Let me know. And I would love to uh, see what you think of little journals and as little gifts even better. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>